Welcome back, guys, to This Week in Metal. I'm Super Metal Brother Matt. And I'm Super Metal Brother Dane. And this is the dawning of a new age. We have here with our first story coming up at you in 3D, 2D, HD, whatever D. Opeth Mikhail Ackerfeld discusses what heavy means to him in 2019. Danny, our boy from Opeth, has gone through a lot of changes with the band itself. They started off as a folk metal band with the orchid on the front of the year. Uh, you know, it's kind of like this like Trojan horse. You know, there was a picture of a flower, but then mm. there was this guy growling over what basically was Iron Maiden kind of tunes. <laughs> then the band would then go on to their iconic sound where it'd be like 10 minute songs about death metal and also folk tunes as well. So now where they are, and what would you say Opeth are right now? Well, the last couple of albums, definitely like progressive, bit sometimes psychedelic rock. I guess they're very inspired by their 80s and 70s influences. I think Mikel came out and said one of his favorite albums of all time was Rainbow's like Rainbow Rising, mm. or just so it's just a rising album. So you can see where he kind of get his inspiration from. And mm-hmm. I heard like a bit of the new track, and yeah, you could say a bit that Iron Maiden sound came back to it with that yeah. opening riff. So yeah, yeah, definitely not what you consider metal, man. <laughs> well, we got a quote from Mikael Akavel as well. Uh, for us at this stage in Cauda Venomum, heaviness isn't guitars tuned down with screaming vocals on top. That's not necessary. What I call heavy music, and he uses quotations. These days, I can listen to Korn and say, oh, that's heavy, but it really doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, I catch up on things in magazines or online. I read about bands that have the heaviest record ever, and I'm not too impressed by that. Okay, it's bands that have the heaviest record ever. Um, what does it mean? Is it impossible mission to be the heaviest? That's been done before over time. I got tired of that tag, of course. When I was younger, it meant everything to me. I was always in pursuit of heaviness. Danny, if only the young uh, Mikhail Eckerfeld could hear the old Mikhail Eckerfeld mm. maybe beat some sense into him because um, I think that's what our old school traditional Opeth fans would love to do right now. Yeah, I think he's getting very like spiritual in his old age. Like to him, he it sounds like heaviness is like a state of mind, man. It's like how it comes across. If what you're saying is heavy, then that's heavy. It's not about the like the intensity of the music. Mm. I guess for him now, it's all about the message and the meaning. So um, you know, he yeah. could have some poetry for him. Could be heavy metal. He's <laughs> like, yeah, that's from really deep poetry. That's heavy metal, man. Uh, I thought when he was at his heaviest, he was at his best writing. So when he incorporated a bit of that as well, I think maybe he's just done a little bit of metal. I think he could just be honest. The thing is, um, uh, certain bands have done this before where they've kind of abandoned metal like Mastodon. And Mastodon went out and basically denounced that we even a metal band. And then they released basically two of the most average albums, according mm. to the, the hardcore fans in their discography, you know. They went to a very alternative market. And when someone would say, uh, some critics have said that it sounds like watered down versions of Queens of the Stone Age. You know, and from a band that actually had genuinely heavy riffs and funky ideas, yeah. you know, and this is maybe Opeth taking a page, not not shooting themselves in the foot, but basically shooting at the ground and just missing and hitting the oil that sparks pretentiousness over them. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, maybe it's like his justification of writing his stuff. And like, no, it is metal. You just haven't heard the metalness of the metal. At the end of the day, <laughs> if that's where he's going, that's great. We've got yeah. four decent, no, three very good albums and yeah. one decent album from Opeth, you know. Uh, go ahead, listen to Steel Life, Blackwater Park, Mimes Rehearse, they're great albums. Some people swear Ghost Forever is good. I don't know, I get f- four tracks into it and have enough of it. Uh, like a 500-gram uh, steak, you only need the first 300 grams, and after that, you start to get the... The picture, right? You're a bit full of it. You're getting a bit full mm. of it. Daniel X Testament bass player says he was treated like a thing, like a stage prop. You know, uh, all even, bass players it, treated that way. I don't well, care. And that's not true because uh, <laughs> at least singers talk to microphones. Ah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, this is very sad because we are Testament fans here. We did rate the album uh, Brotherhood, Brotherhood of the Snake very high. And to hear that uh, one of the boys who was fundamental in the band at some point, it would have maybe even contributed, maybe fast in the general direction of the album, <sighs> and uh, didn't manage to get it. It was very sad times, Danny. It's a weird Holy Grail reference in there. <laughs> well, I've got ourselves Greg Christian. He is the bass player, or ex-bass player. And he did write and say, sorry, on Facebook, lately I've been more than a few people asking me about Testament and how things went down. I don't talk about it anymore. No point. No one will ever understand. I honestly... Still don't, and I was there, man. This sounds like a good start into a movie. Maybe for like Schindler's List or something. Yeah, could anyway, be. Anyway, we'll move on. About the most basic bottom line is we had one fundamental disagreement, and it was irreconcilable. Danny, uh, stuffed areas and normal areas, is that what we're <laughs> going with? Well, we can't talk about that because if it's going to break up Testament, then we can't talk about it here on the show. Well, he's not there anymore anyway. Uh, so. On a human level, I thought my life mattered and that my kids and the other family members mattered too. I still think so. Hmm. 
Sure. Layers of the onion right now. To them, it didn't matter. I was a thing, a stage prop, not a person. They still think so. That's about as real as it gets. Anyone can say whatever, but the bottom line is hashtags don't lie. Danny, sounds like maybe a family thing. Maybe he has a, a strong collection of his fish and maybe they're here as kids uh, and they didn't want to bring it on the road. Uh, maybe can get certain countries. Who knows? Well, according to um, Chuck Billy and Eric Peterson, uh, they weren't overly happy, I guess, that he left for nine years and decided to come back. And so those nine years were pretty tough testament. They were in Australia financially. They weren't making money because that was during the nineties when rock metal was dying and yeah. grunge was taking over. This so no one cared about, I guess, thrash. Unless you're Metallica or Pantera. Yeah, yeah, those the bands. thrash. Uh, well, the thrash. They had to. You had to move. Like even Megadeth and Metallica saw the writing on the wall, and they went, you know, and wrote their worst albums. You mm. could say, so, you know, even Metallica went back and retraced about, you know, load and reload, saying yeah, they were they were bad albums for all the hardcore fans. All you need now is tool to admit the same about the latest album, ah. and the whole world will be restored integrity, yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. So that's why um, I guess so he decided to come back into the band for three years. Now, apparently, according to Chuck Billy and stuff, he only came back purely as like a touring guy. He wasn't mm. really part of the band again. And then I guess maybe he felt like, damn, I kind of helped create at the start, so maybe back pay I'm entitled to some. And I guess Eric and Chuck like, no, if you have this sort of hard times, we would have looked after you. Yeah. You don't come back when the tires back on the on the car on a race car and it's all going well so that's a bit of a shame yeah it's a know? shame nevertheless yeah. testament have moved on and they're still writing great riffs and stuff eric peterson managed to rip off testament in the latest dragon lord album which was a shame because dragon lord were already awesome you didn't need to steal testament riffs because apparently uh, at one point he was using dragon lord's riffs in some testament songs damn, you know, they really? had one of the darker albums apparently i have to go check it out, check that out and um that album was known to be the most darkest and the blackest of a little thrash album so we will review that in a retro review I so we can the, talk about I it the blackest thrash album was the black album hey 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 daniel Ooh. sharon osborne won't let <laughs> ozzy attend to the grammy ceremony mostly because he probably won't recognize the uh, black uh, sabbath uh, i'd imagine he's too old he's not allowed out um, the nursing home at danny age. what's going on why is sharon osborne being so particular about a shaded ozzy osborne is his bladder so weak that he would leak uh, anyway now it doesn't have to make it on a motley crew record nah, they got pads for that but what apparently happens in the Grammys, they finally, Black Sabbath got uh, nominated. For, well, no, not nominated. They, they were given the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award by yeah. that association. For, for being alive that long. <laughs> 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 Going through generations of generations of music. For a war of attrition, they made it. Yeah. So, yeah, they got nominated, which, and they won fair enough. It's, I think them and three or five people won it, so that's all good. Yeah. But Sharon is very upset because they weren't shown on the proper massive broadcast which oh. gets shown around the world and all yeah. the countries they need the exposure really yeah exactly right I mean, like, yeah. who knows who ozzy osbourne is <laughs> yeah, right i mean it's not like anyone's yeah. wants a show or yeah. seeing the seeing the black sabbath band which yeah. is very much like a need that coming break. band need that you know break. they just they just retired because they couldn't make any yes, money right. like testament you know exactly so oh, she was wow. upset that they had to go to the um side show i guess you call it so it's not like the main download in europe it's downloaded in australia i guess so they got put on that bill and she wasn't happy so you're not going because you're not part of the big bill no. which i guess i, was, I don't really know if he cared or not i guess he has something really like you said it, whether he knew or whatever exactly right it's just the way it is oh um, it's a shame because everybody went even bill ward went there no one's really talking to him at the moment so it could have been like a mini reunion oh that'd be nice uh, in the same room yeah. together having a chat but yeah. maybe sharon was like nah it's not gonna happen we can't have any of this money going to other people in the band nah uh, yeah that's right yeah, might yeah, start yeah. applying for what he's entitled to danny we cannot have uh, that yeah, here. Maybe it's part of it. but yeah so that's a bit of a shame but in the end that's again it's a bit petty i mean like in the end but you not turning up doesn't mean anything different you still get the award and you know like yeah whatever daniel we've got here of Mm. course tool they're making into the headlines Mm. but for different reasons than i would have thought um there is a bit of a story here with tool now what happened was justin bieber can you believe it pop icon said he admitted the song the pot was good he liked the song why not you like the song may now responds with a hashtag on twitter saying bummer and as the guy from Testament just said, hashtags don't lie. They so don't lie. Real. So obviously, Hashtag what real. he was doing was calling him out and, and just desecrating <laughs> all over his family and everyone who's related because Hayley Bieber took exception to it. I think he's a wife. Yeah, he's actually a wife. A custom Justin Bieber. And the Sharon Osbourne of the pop industry <laughs> must be because she okay. said, what, in response to good old tools, Maynard James Keaton, um, he expressed as a fan of your music, grew up listening to your music. You must be unhappy with yourself that you make people feel small who express their admiration for you. Very childish and hurtful thing to do. I hope you find security within yourself. Sad place to be. He hasn't done it in 20 years. I don't think that uh, tweet's going to help anymore anyway. But it's probably him taking it a little too seriously as well. 
Yeah, well, according, well, to all, yeah according to all the Tool fans, which, you know, they're numerous and they're loud and get their pins crossed. Like, oh, oh, don't worry. Tool fans will let you know what they have to say about anything and if, you never if go you, against a Tool fan. If you were a real Tool fan, you would understand that Kina was long, uh, joking because he's a right. jokester. We all know he jokes when he says he doesn't care about their fans and he hates right. them and hates his fans. That's right. We know he's joking. He would never say that. But what <laughs> I think was the most fun out of all of this is that she went to the time to do I mean, dude, Beaver's a big boy. He's got millions of dollars. He has time to spit on his own fans so uh, yeah, yeah. what's it like to him to get spit on well apparently they don't like it well you know maybe those teenage girls didn't like it when they had a bit of drool on their face actually they probably, probably, probably like, loved yeah, it, they loved it yeah. um nevertheless rich people with rich people problems but we're here to make sure everyone hears about it well i didn't even know he was married so there you go she got some sort of notoriety from it. apparently thinks she's one of the baldwin kids so i think fudge but yes yeah, so hey, that was baldwin yeah, that's, one that's, that's actually ones. yeah one. Out of Isn't any one of them talented? No, two of them. Daniel Baldwin's not bad. He's Daniel Baldwin's pretty good as well. Yeah, that's not very metal though. Is, no. Um, any other story? It's made out of James. Kitty. Sad, sad story. Mudvayne's bassist Ryan Martini shares his thoughts on the memes and videos. Now, if you don't know what he's talking about, you must check out the song Dig. It was written in the 90s, so you know it must be dated. You gotta dig, man. It's a new metal song, and it has this very iconic, slappy, jazzy ding sound. But you said new metal, it's but funky. it came out in the 90s. How's that new, man? Well, back then, <laughs> they thought they were revolutionizing the industry. Turns out they weren't. Uh, um, but then again, you know, bands these days, like the band we reviewed last week, they seem to like that sound. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about a little bit about it, Danny, with Ryan Marty. Uh, th- the, this is a quote from it. Uh, that thing was uh, when they were really greens, apparently. He goes, I don't think any of us knew that we are going to be doing it all day and night kind of thing, straight down to this was done. It was kind of new for us at the time, and I don't think any of us had the exception. So you find yourself in that situation, and you're really just kind of going for the ride. With subsequent videos, you know the drill. We're all going to show up. You're in your wardrobe, make up early, all that stuff. And it goes the normally goes. Um, that was the first experience, and I'm pretty shocked and fun. They would be pretty shocked with that. I mean, they're just, you know, wanking their instrument, and all of a sudden... Here they are, 30 years or 20 years later when the internet explodes, and uh, yeah, people are still digging that stuff. Yeah, so that's their first cl- film clip they're talking about, their first experiences, which I'm surprised it took them that long to do a film clip where it's just white background for most of it, and there's one part where the black veins or whatever come up. Yeah. Now, some of, the, of some of the things I like, because I've seen a couple of them. One of them is... There's a couple, is, really? Yeah, yeah. Ah. One of the videos, and specifically, is every time he does that bring sound, the song goes faster. So it takes a four-minute song and makes it like into a minute, because every time he brings it, it goes 1% ah. faster. And so he bumps it up. So by the end of it, they're like... Blah, 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 the chipmunks. And obviously, in subsequent, the next video I saw was there. Every time he blinks, it goes slower. Aww. So at the end of it, it's like a doom metal song. Aww. It's like listening to Black Sabbath back when they were taking that acid, all those drugs from Colombia or Aww. name a country Is that it, had never heard they, of. Could they? Or were they? Uh, no, they're more like bands who are trying to sound like Black Sabbath, you know. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> no. Metal. When they slowed it down. Oh, they slowed it down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just sounds what it oh, does, okay. you know. Um, there is an mm-hmm. interesting quote then, which I wanted to do it. He goes, he also said about some of the memes that have come out. And he said, the times we live in, I feel like some of it is a little misogynistic and that's a little not for my liking. It doesn't seem to be most equal in some ways. Danny, he never ever goes into going to this, um, basically drops a bomb in this conversation, but he never goes into explaining it. Like he, he knows politically right now it's good to talk about this stuff but he never dives into what do you think he meant by misogynistic when it comes to memes was it into reference to these memes because he had no shirt on yeah that's what um, I was thinking. Uh, or maybe it's the makeup because you know all those chicks from poison were doing it as well <laughs> and there's no problem with that uh, what's going on what did he mean when he said the times we live in it feels like some of it's a little misogynistic and that's not a little of my liking in regards to memes well because unless there's certain like memes where they grab that image and they refer to it linked it to something which occurred like i don't i never i don't really knew there was a bit of ding meme going around those yeah. those songs and apparently someone did like a 50 minute or whatever clip of just him yeah just him two hours it was two hours so of him going uh, bring, uh, and, and he watched like apparently th- 10 seconds or 20 seconds of two recycles you go, yeah, i got the gist of it right now. Well, he played the song, so... I'm yeah, <laughs> exactly. He's like, well, what's going to happen? Yeah, so I don't know. So I'm not sure. Maybe there's, there's, yeah, there's other means we don't know about which they use that 
image like yeah. still of that. I mean, oh. I, I know, I know the the dude from Arch Enemy, uh, Angela, yeah. whatever. Is that, is that her name now? Or Glussy? So. Yeah, she would be pretty happy with what he said, but there's no context. There's no more conversation around it. So, I mean, Metal Sucks loved it. I mean, that's probably why he made an article. I mean, he said, "Look, you said misogynistic. Uh, we're giving you a front page. Uh, Here's some internet money." That's true. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Move on to here. AJ Madden, Danny. Apparently, he said, or we, yeah, for what happened with um, the Sound previous wave. Soundwave, uh, he did. Who's AJ Madden for people who don't remember who AJ Madden was back in the late 90s, early 2000s, yeah, I think it was? he was the main producer or promoter who promoter. pretty much got Big Day Out going and then Soundwave going, and then pretty much both of them got destroyed because... I think went bankrupt. Bankrupt. Uh, a lot of bands were searching for money they never yeah, got, yeah. you know. Um, by the end of it, there was such little turnouts as well. You know, it was yeah, just right. like people saw the writing on the walls. Some people commented on whatever it could have been, you know, the lineups themselves or maybe because they're being elitist assholes because at the end of the day, um, you know, it's just, I, we went to every show that every sound wave that ever came here because just in case it never happened again. Yeah, that's lucky and, we did. And, and like we did because we saw some of the best metal bands we've ever going to see, you know. I think after Metallica though, it, it, if people were like, if people were thinking the next one's going to get better and then Metallica comes, there is no more. They are the biggest draw card in metal. Um, and for people, and then we had uh, Iron Maiden as well. And after that, well, I was like, well, why are we supporting this anymore? We're not going to see the band we really want to see, you know. Uh, anyway, look, we'll move on to it because this is about download. And Download Festival wasn't done by AJ Madden. Apparently, he's not mm. even connected with Download. But for some reason, people are going to him to see if 2020 will see the return of the Download Music Festival. Download is pretty much the best thing as far as the festival goes for having heavy music being broadcast across many stages in a big park that's usually used for family recreational times. I think they had a racetrack last year. Yeah, the racetrack, mm. whatever. Um, but there were some problems because the Liberal government at the time in Sydney yeah, decided damn. what they were going to do is tackle the drug problem that no one really wanted addressing, but apparently... And I blame Cozzy for that because Cozzy from the Channel 7 decided to attack him saying, you, and started pointing the fingers, you need to do pill testing. It's like, look, don't worry. It's not a big deal. You know, people are going to bring pill testing and they're going to kill themselves. Like, whatever. Like, let them do it, you know. But they're like, no, those lives could have been saved if you would have stopped that person from ingesting any pills that he didn't know was in and then everything would have been okay. And so I think the government at the time said, well, you know what? We're just going to increase security. And then what are you going to say about it? You're going you're gonna to say it's bad to have the police presence there? Yeah. Although at the same time, the Liberal government did kill him as well. So, you know, whatever. You can blame one of them or hate one or the other. But that forced Download Festival to pay $200,000 extra mm. to having the required police presence because of the so-called drug problem that Rich. we have in festivals. Yeah. Um, now, that might have scared him off because we haven't heard anything as a potential 2020 download. And that'd be a real shame because we are massive fans of the download. But we've seen the writing on the wall, you know, these people are here to make money and, you know, them coming to another country they're not even from, just to be slapped with incredibly archaic and completely moronic laws around drug policies as well, which is just not the way that we probably should be doing it. Um, you know, what's going to happen, Danny? What is your take on this? Yeah, so that only was in New South Wales. So Victoria yeah. didn't have that. But it was only two gigs. It was like in Victoria and New South yeah. Wales. Yeah, so... Two years ago, it was just Victoria, then they went to Victoria and New South Wales this year. But if that's going to happen again next year, with the whole, we have to pay an extra 200 grand for policing, then maybe it might just stay in Melbourne because they probably won't make any money if they have to spend an extra 200 grand on policing. Mm. Maybe it's decreased, who knows? So, mm. yeah, what the, what the whole theory about this is because no one's booked in the same venue as of yet, they're thinking, well, you haven't booked the same venue yet, therefore it's not coming down. But that might just mean they're changing venues or they're not booking yet because they don't need a book yet. Or maybe they're not doing Sydney. Maybe they're going to do just Melbourne again. I feel so. like they have three more months, though, to, to announce it because it takes... Yeah, March is generally the year. That mm. is our great year for touring. Like, we have, the, we have everything. We have our Adelaide festivals when it comes to the arts, which is called um, Fringe. Yeah. That's our thing. We've got the races as well. So all the cars, all the bogans mm. sit on top of hills yeah. and drink a lot of alcohol that they probably shouldn't be drinking. Mm that uh, fuels their addiction to yell at strangers um, that they don't even know, you know, about car racing that no one really cares about. Everything's going on in those times. So if they, they want to build it, because by September you announce it, then you've got three or you know, four months to yank it out, our giblets, you know, yeah. stri strictly get them all excited, and then, you know, we pop when we go to see the games. Yeah, I mean, normally they release the um, bands in November, so you normally want to have things 
like in order by November yeah. or October. Was it October? Because it's in March. It's not like it's yeah. that far away. The saving grace is because AJ Man isn't actually t- technically connected with Mzianlo. Yeah, so going to him might be as relevant as going to the you know the person that your mum and pop saw yeah. and asking him salami in the lineup for seeing if Tool's going to be there. And chances are not. No, not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe it's soon after. He goes, yeah, we're going to do the continent to Delhi because why but, not? Uh, hey. Fingers crossed, guys, download. And if they don't want to go to Sydney, Adelaide will host it, you know. Yeah, why not? We don't have this population for it, but we'll be there. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it'd be great. (laughs) (laughs) All right, and our last story for today is Lamb of God. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, Chris Adelaide is the drummer. He is synonymous with the band. He's one of the founding members of the band. He's been there when their band was called Burn the Priest, but they changed it to a much more friendlier name for the Christian Catholic market, which is obviously Lamb of God, (laughs) which is far more acceptable, I'd imagine. (laughs) Um, Danny, this is a massive shock, but some people did see the writing on the wall. Yeah, so two years ago, he had a motorcycle accident, so they were forced to replace him because he couldn't tour and he couldn't yeah. jam with him. I don't think he could even write the new album if it's been done yet or what's happening. Yeah, apparently he helped a little bit, but yeah. he didn't actually play on it. Yeah, I guess so. Yes, yeah, so then they've replaced with a guy, and that guy's end up becoming a touring guy to becoming a member. So, yeah, and Chris is out. So everybody's yeah. really surprised. Yeah, shocked. It, it is because they really didn't address why he left. They just said, yeah, we're back from the tour. Um, okay, well, Chris isn't with us anymore. But with this new guy from Windsor Plague, and uh, we've got this other album we're going to be writing and stuff. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah. It, it, it's, um, it felt a little cheap to not have one thing, to have Chris Adler kind of do it on his own terms and announce to the fans, like, I am stepping away and give him the last chance to do it, um, which strikes me that the band kicked him out. You know what I mean? Because be. I generally think for a lifetime member, mm. if they want to go, they do it on their own time and they do it on their own thing. They do the whole announcement. They have their own, maybe a clip video or, or you know, the Facebook post that's far mm. too long, yeah, but yeah. far too necessary, you know? Yeah. Um, it's very short, sharp and shy in this Facebook message. It's like, uh, we yeah. start to um, welcome art something into the band yep. uh, I would like to thank Chris for his efforts and time this was like 20 best. years could you imagine that like having a relationship yeah. with someone for 20 years and then it's like well you know that's the way they did it is like he cheated on him you know it's like you know I don't even know that Chris Adler guy anymore you know like, this, yeah. guy, this guy's much better you, you're much better more of a, yeah, or, a, a drummer to us than or that old like guy a friend you don't talk to for like 10 years you just assume you're not friends anymore and just yeah. like oh yeah just confirming we're not friends anymore Look, yeah why Chris not Chris hasn't been to band practice in 3 years <laughs> you know, Chris is <laughs> in the band I've got this new guy I just yeah, 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 to do yeah. it you know, hey, you've been playing drums here for last couple of weeks yeah. you know he just rocked in the and studio then, and then the lawyer's like you do realise you have to say he's gone otherwise he would charge the road yeah. Oh, okay. oh by the way uh, new guy Chris is out I okay, wonder if sweet. Chris is rocking up and he's just tucked on his thing and searched his name like one of those vain internet <laughs> searches like oh I'm not even a guy anymore yeah like the guy if, if anyone's up his phone <laughs> yeah anyone watches that um Oh, hired gun documentary that happened to the drummer of uh, Billy Joel's band. That's right. Tell got, story, yeah, his, so this is a good documentary. If you ever, I don't sure if it's still on Netflix, but watch it's called Hired Guns. All about just session musos. So that's a pretty cool documentary, right? And they had like, the drummer for Billy Joel's band. He was pretty much the founding member as well of Billy Joel. There's only three of them who founded it. And Billy Joel's like, yeah, I'll never get rid of you. We love you, friends, family, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then one day he asked for a pay rise. In bad move. Bad move out there. <laughs> Don't, don't ask what you're entitled to. Um, you know, yeah. you might have friends and family yeah. and like even loved ones who are actually fall and dare I say it, ill. Yeah. I'm not going to cut up Don't do that. Don't do that. So he did that, wrong mistake. And then things got progressively worse in the relationship, etc. And then one day, uh, Billy Joel's band was playing in like uh, New York and he, the drummer lives in New York. And one of his mates comes up to him and goes, oh, Jimmy, can you give me tickets to your gig tonight or mm-hmm. tomorrow night? And he's like, what gig? He goes, you guys are playing in Madison Square Garden or something. He goes, we are and he goes oh and that's when he realised he wasn't in the band anymore no like you're out thanks for your service it's just like we're going to replace you we're just not going to call you again so damn well as soon as Chris says anything I'm sure we'll take that about it here on the yeah maybe so maybe they just had to get something out so because they're about a tour and just but maybe yeah, Chris will come out and do his spiel. So what did you guys think of this week's show? If you've got a story you want us to talk about, leave it in the comment sections below. We are doing this every week. Until then, I'm Super Metal Brother Matt. I'm Super Metal Brother Dane. We are the Super Metal Brothers. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll catch you all next week.